the story. He says the myth of the first sacrifice is the common element across the mythologies told in all of those populations. He identifies the following key elements. There are Girardian twins uh, at the beginning, often locked into a case of mimetic rivalry between the twins and all the things we've talked about. There they are. The anthropomorphic twins are named Manu and Yemo. He's been able, by studying cognatic linkages across time in the words for these individuals, he can reconstruct the Proto-Indo-European sound for these particular individuals, the one who plays the man and the one who plays the role of twin. There is always a first bovine, which is fascinating for my purposes. There is always a killing and sacrifice, and usually the creation of the world from whatever or whoever is sacrificed. And what's so interesting is how that varies from place to place. Again, in different versions, even the name for the bovine is cognatic, that is, linked by descent and reconstructable back to Proto-Indo-European. The key from my point of view is the changing role of bovines in mythology as people move from the south, from that Anatolian or further south origin, toward the north. So let's start with a southern variant. Start with a southern variant, let's take Iranian. In the Iranian version, there's a first king, Geomart, who slays a male bovine, a huge bull. And you've probably seen this. Um, these are is a sculptured, uh, both sculptured versions in this case. And uh, it's definitely an ox. And if you're not persuaded that it's an ox, uh, let me reassure you, because underneath there's a scorpion in every case attacking the testicles of the bull, helping Geomart defeat the bull. So we know it's always a male. Uh, no question about it, even when it's a little bit obscure. Uh, yep, it turns out it's a scorpion attacking the testicles. Always a bull, always a scorpion. In the Mediterranean variants, you notice a, a big difference. In Greek and Roman versions, the first bovine is female, a lactating cow who provides milk, who provides milk, not just meat. In the Indic and Iranian versions, uh, the slaughter results in meat, and in the Mediterranean versions, the first bovine provides milk. But it's milk for the infant Zeus. It's milk for a who, uh, the person who goes on, the figure that goes on to become the, the most important deity of the faith. Here you can see Nicolas Poussin's uh, depiction. And again, you can see just getting right in there and drinking from the udder is the infant Jupiter. Zeus, similarly, the goat is named Amaltea. Um, and um, uh, this is a pretty interesting case. Lincoln says the same thing with Romulus and Remus, that they are inflections of Yemo and Manu, and as grandchildren of Jupiter, what he says is the she-wolf was substituted because a cow is not a befitting symbolism for the founding of the militant Roman Empire, so they wanted something much more feisty and aggressive. They chose the wolf, but she's still lactating and still feeding these young culture heroes as infants um, uh, directly from her udder. So that's all from Lincoln, and so is this one. Now let's look at a northern variant. This is really fun. Let's go up to Norway, Old Norse, where the first king is Ymir, the frost giant, a very adult frost giant, a super gigantic figure who feeds on four rivers of milk from a uh, first bovine, who is herself a giant cow, out Humla. Uh, these are depicting the rivers of milk. Here's another rendition where you can actually see there's four of them. The poor guy, he looks like he's had plenty already, but nevertheless, he's feeding. <laughs> Um, uh, on the milk from the first bovine. Ymir, once again, is often depicted as drinking straight from the other on the giant cow, Audhumla, and it's often very graphically portrayed. I mean, these are <laughs> as, as close as you can get to reinforcing the idea that adult heroes do drink milk. Uh, in the first sacrifice, uh, descendants of the first beings who are licked out of the uh, ice by Audhumla, who licks at the salt blocks to uh, uh, liberate uh, people contained within frozen ice, Odin and his brothers make the earth from Ymir's flesh. So here's the creation story that's told. Uh, from the brains come the clouds, um, the oceans are made from the blood of Ymir, and the rocks um, are from the bones. So we have the creation myth, we have the sacrifice, we have so many of the Girardian elements. But now looking back at the data from the mythology, we could say that during the differenti differentiation of Indo-European myths from a common source in the south, 
new variants appeared that were appropriate to the high latitude environments. In other words, the myth changed in appropriate ways, ways in reinforcing the drinking of milk in antiquity. More than 2,000 years of drinking milk in the north. What's so fascinating to me about this is that we just look at who the bovine is. They're males in the south. They're females feeding young children in the uh, intermediate. Um,